Welcome to the Granville County Board of Commissioners Monday, February 6, 2023 meeting. Commissioner Karen, would you please uh, provide us the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance? Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, as we come together this evening to conduct the business of Granville County, I ask that you guide our hearts and our minds and that our decisions are pleading in your sight. Father, for those in our community that are in need, Father, be with them and comfort them in only the way that you can. Illuminate them, Father, to us so that we can help as well. Father, for all those things in this world that are going on right now, I pray for our first responders, our law enforcement, our soldiers, our military, if they're home and abroad, Father, be with them and comfort them as only you can. And Father, all these things I ask in your name and your most precious son, amen. Amen. If you'll please stand with me for the pledge to the flag of our United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, board members. Um, the consent agenda, if you all had a chance to review it, do I, what's the pleasure of the board? Second motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Any opposed? Motion passes. Ms. Harrison, it's a pleasure to have you here tonight. If you would, uh, when you come forward, uh, could you please just briefly introduce yourself to uh, those who are here tonight and the board? And, uh, and thank you again for being here, and we look forward to your presentation. Absolutely. Glad to be here. I'm going to pass around for board members a hard copy of our latest community health assessment. And for everyone here, I'm Lisa Macon Harrison, local health director for both Granville and Vance counties. We are, in my opinion, very fortunate to have a two-county district health department and the ongoing support of each of our county commissioner boards from both counties. I'm here tonight to let you know the updates around our latest community health assessment report, as is part of my responsibility for accreditation and also just general good communication. As you all know, community health assessments are the way that public health assesses its patient, the entire community. So just like a doctor or a nurse has to do a full head-to-toe assessment on the individual patient that walks through a clinic, in public health, we consider that the top to bottom of our county and all of the needs that the people within our county have for us to prioritize the funding and the capacity to do the work of public health. We do this community health assessment process every three years um, in concert with our health system. So that is my first update to you tonight. These are just few slides here that we have. Um, are going to go over both how we do the assessment and what the findings were from qualitative and quantitative data collection across the two counties. So in September of 2021, we convened a steering committee of our major stakeholders representing health care, government, mental health, law enforcement, education, and other community members, parents, and uh, school participants to help us conduct this assessment. And the CHA team worked between August and May, uh, August of 21 to May of 22, to collect and analyze the data and, and present that back to the steering committee. We were lucky to have funding to conduct all of this through the Triangle North Health Care Foundation. Community health assessment is one of those year-long processes that we are required to do in public health, but not funded to do by the state of North Carolina. So it was nice to have the Triangle North Healthcare Foundation support this work financially. There are three main priorities that came out of these findings. So as we all know, the last 12 years of these 
community health assessments have resulted in our needing to focus on mental health and substance use prevention. We take that work seriously at systems level change, community level change, individual level change, and we collected, as you can tell, lots of different types of data to tell us that story. The next priority that we work on um, after mental health and substance use disorder is youth well-being and safety. So next slide. Health and well, healthcare access is the order of this slide. I guess uh, youth uh, comes last in the alphabet. So healthcare access is next on the list here in the slides. And we collected a lot of data to make sure that it wasn't just our understanding of transportation and where people can go to access healthcare choices in our two counties. It was also about affordability of those choices. So when we dug into that issue a little bit more with focus groups, people said the perception of and the reality of how they pay for health care services is of concern and something they would hope that the health department locally would help them address. And then the last priority that I have on the slide that's next is engaging youth for community health and safety. So it's always um, a priority of ours to engage youth and uh, make sure that their voices are heard. We work with school systems. We work with S Smart Start and our early childhood development centers to make sure um, that we're paying attention to youth and family needs at all times and connecting to other areas in the community who are doing that work. Um, that continues to be um, you know, a priority of your health department. So what questions might you have for me about the community health assessment process, the community health assessment priorities, and what your local health department is doing to address those priorities? That's certainly just the abbreviated overview. As, as you see, you have a, a whole report that I've sent both um, in an an electronic version and a hard copy version for you to have in reference in the future. It's very helpful, of course, for those of us who also are supported by grant funding. And many of your partners or people who come to you for advice might need to have some of these data in this report to be able to write grants for our um, community-based organizations and, and other areas doing similar work. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, Ms. Harrison actually just said something that I wanted to just uh, note, and that is how helpful this document becomes when we start to seek funds, be it from federal, state, or other agencies, to have this kind of data that's been comp uh, compiled really makes it good. And it gives us a chance really to see um, where there are some real challenges in our community and also things we could be proud of. So I just appreciate the document and having it so easily accessible that we can use it. Thank you so much. Great. Yes, and it's available online on our website. If anyone else in the public needs to access it, it is at gvph.org under Community Health Assessment and um, available online. None. Absolutely. So the other information that you got ahead of time are two overviews or fact sheets about the work that is happening around opioid prevention, treatment, and recovery. There's a lot of work happening, and as you know, public health um, is at the center of all three of those levels. We also work on systems change to make sure we're addressing systems that can be helpful. So just three quick points that I want to make sure that everyone knows. Drug overdose deaths occurring across North Carolina residents continue to be on the rise, especially after the pandemic. And what I mean when I say drug overdose deaths, that metric includes deaths involving all types of medications and drugs, including opioids, which are commonly prescribed 
such as heroin, heroin, synthetic narcotics like fentanyl and fentanyl analogs, stimulants like cocaine and methamphetamine, benzodiazepines, and others. I find over time it's important to say those names of drugs out loud so people know what we mean when we say opioids. Um, they are typically prescribed for pain relief and then they can also um, be found in non-prescription manner. So one of the things that we look at is death rates in public health. So the rate of death per 100,000 people. In the state of North Carolina in 2021, there was a death rate of drug overdose deaths of 38.5 per 100,000, which equaled over 4,000 deaths in North Carolina. In Granville County, that death rate is 43 per 100,000 or 26 deaths. And in Vance County, the death rate is 45 per 100,000 or 20 deaths per year on average. And so one of the things North Carolina has been doing for the last five years is working on an action plan to address with evidence-informed approaches how do we prevent those deaths and how do we educate the public and make sure people have opportunities for recovery. So in Granville Vance Public Health, we have um, done a number of things that are grant funded to get us started in this work. We started in 2015 with a HRSA grant for 100000 a year to pull together a coalition to address harm reduction approaches. Um, that is an evidence-informed way where we can address both clinical care individually in the health department and also education out in community. And so since 2015, the work that we have done um, we have tried to address to, um, naloxone kit distribution in the community, which is a way to reverse opioid overdose. We've distributed over 2,650 kits. We have had reported back over 257 lives saved through overdose reversal. And we've also addressed the justice involved populations because oftentimes when people are released from jail and have previously had an issue with opioids or other drugs, that is the highest opportunity for them to overdose. And so we have education and naloxone provided then. We also make sure that we offer education through the North Carolina Harm Reduction Coalition and meet people where they are to reduce harm and death. So the other things that we're doing in the health department is the regional stepping up initiative. Granville, Vance, Halifax, Warren, and Franklin counties all contribute together for us to look at mental health and substance use disorder among our jailed population. We also look at community linkages to care and make sure that we understand ways to get people into recovery options. There are lots of options that are available outside of our counties, uh, South in Durham and Raleigh and Chapel Hill, but we need to make sure that people know where they can go in our two counties and the health department is one place people can go for medication assisted treatment with a doctor with um, counseling sessions and with medication that helps their brain come back into engagement away from opioid use disorder. And that is an evidence-based approach to make sure that people can stay in recovery a longer time. And so we have, again, on the back side of that sheet that I had provided for you, we do organizational, individual, community level changes, and then look at policy and systems. So there are lots of ways we're trying to address this, and there are lots more ways we need to address this. And we're looking forward to working with you and our opioid advisory committee um, that is part of Granville County's community outreach to address how we best spend those opioid dollars. Certainly, it has to be on those evidence-informed practices, um, and that's what public health studies and wants to make sure that we do well, too. Mr. Chairman, I do have a question. Um, and this is not, it is a question for you, but it isn't. Um, are you aware of the new youth committee that we've um, gotten together in Granville County with Ms. Pierre helping out with her son? And we would like to get um, some young people on your 
board or whatever um, to give their opinions. Sure. So Ms. Puriere has those, those names and if you'll let her know what you need and how you can help her and her help you, I think that would work, work out great. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. I have definitely had some, um, some introduction to the idea but have not met you yet and would look forward to that. Good to see you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do any board members have any more questions of the health director? Ms. Harrison, thank you for coming and uh, explaining to us what's, what's happening, particularly uh, along the lines of uh, substance abuse and mental health. Um, I have one question for, uh, for, before we close. Uh, what have you seen in regards to fentanyl within well, Gravel County? Well, I wish we had a better way to test and address fentanyl specifically. I think it's a sneaky and very hard to detect drug that is hard to predict where we're going to find it. Um, there are opportunities to test for it if it's in people's systems, but it's also very, very deadly and a lot of people um, only have to use it once and then have a severe overdose. So it's a definite problem we need to do a lot more educating about and a lot more detecting for. I, I wish there were an easier answer than that, but it's it's a scourge and we need to address it um, differently than we've really been working on with other opioids. And is there interaction between you and our school system in regards to identification of that and or um, means of protecting our children? Certainly. We're trying to have ongoing conversations and we have a standing memorandum of understanding with our school system to make sure that we provide some medical oversight for our nurses and social workers and this along with trauma-informed work is a top priority of ours. Thank you Ms. Harrison. Thanks for taking your time not tonight to come via. Absolutely. There's a long way to go and a lot of work to do and we appreciate your support in it. Thank you ma'am. County Manager, I will uh, turn it over to you now, um, would be our item four, which was not on the original agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, apologize for the, for the staff oversight, but uh, there is an important item that we wanted to bring to you tonight that should have been on the agenda that came out to you and that wasn't. Um, that's the presentation of the fiscal 21-22 audit. Uh, by the time we discovered this, oversight, the, the lead auditor was already en route to Granville County and so we wanted to honor his effort and make sure that the board had an opportunity to hear about these findings and so I'll ask our finance director uh, Steve McNally to come down and introduce the auditor and, and distribute materials. Thank you. Uh, yes, we've got Alan Thompson here from Thompson Price Scott and Adams out of out of Whitebull, and uh, uh, I believe you all have, have gotten the uh, summary report. This was the report that the audit committee reviewed um, just a week week or so ago uh, with Mr. Thompson, but he's here uh, to to give us an overview on the audit. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you and good evening to everyone. Um, there are full, full blown copies of the audits here and along with the presentation summary. And if you'd be kind enough to flip over to page one of that summary. Um, <clears throat> the main thing you do hire us as an outside audit firm to do is to issue an opinion on the financial statements as a whole. We issued unmodified report which is the highest level of reporting quote unquote clean report overall. There are a couple findings. So on page one, uh, significant audit findings. There were no significant audit findings. There were some. On page two, no difficulties encountered in performing the audit. No uncorrected misstatements. No disagreements with management. Management did provide us with a representation letter dated January 20th. One aware that management consulted with any outside accountants, auditors, etc. And then under other findings issues, <clears throat> we had uh, GASB 84 and GASB 87, which are two new standards that came out effective 21 and then 22. Talking about how changing much more related to accounting technical stuff than you would uh, be dealing with on a budget basis, if you will. Um, 
There were some technical findings in the Medicaid and cross-cutting programs. No question cost, quote, dollar amounts there, okay? Uh, and then if you'd be kind enough to flip over to page four, we'll talk about some of the numbers in the report itself. I don't attempt to say that these are all the key numbers in the audit report, but these are some of the key numbers in the audit report. And what we attempt to do is put those in this first column and then put the four prior year's numbers beside it so you have some idea or context of what that number is and then any trend information that might be gained from that. So the top number there, total fund balance in your general fund at 50668 you can see the little dip almost like a U there if you go back to 18 where it's 48 and it's coming back up the last four years. And then unavailable fund balance at 6,150, restricted committed at 23,462, total general fund expenditures at 72,745, and then fund balance as a percentage 61.2. Unassigned fund balance at 27.2, and then unassigned fund balance as a percentage at 37.4. Then revenues over non expenses before transfers, etc., other financing sources. General fund is a positive 4,165. Solid waste is a positive 31,238, and stormwater had a negative 16,742. The next group there you see a cash and accumulated depreciation for business type activities, meaning total fixed assets at 7,083,000, accumulated depreciation at 1.6 million, and cash at 3,388. Cash in your uh, general fund is 46,762, and the solid waste fund is 2,926. And then in storm waters, 461, and other governmentals at 9.4 million. Uh, fund balance again is 50 million 668. Net position in your solid waste is a million 754. Net negative, and then uh, net position in your storm water is 456 674, and then other governmentals 3 million 233. What you're really looking for when you look at your proprietary funds, in this case, solid waste storm water fund is positive cash flow and not necessarily high net position because you're charging your, your citizens and you're looking to make sure there's operating cash flow, not necessarily high net positions or quote fund balance. You see your property tax rates and collection percentages there, 99.04% on the collection percentage, highest of any of the five years shown. Then you see your property uh, valuation and levy amounts. And then a breakdown of your total debt uh, at going from 85 million, then you had a bump up and down to 84 million 321. If you'd be kind enough to flip over to page five, you see a breakdown of your general fund debt service there for three years presented, and some of that's because of the change in the way um, it was broken down in the 18-19 in the year. And then a breakdown of your general fund revenues on the bottom, going from 61881000 up to 74592000 and total expenditures going from 56337000 up to 74799000 And then flipping over to page six there, you can see that little U-shape, if you will, in total fund balance in blue. And then on the bottom of that page, you see your analysis of fund balance available at 61.2. And you can see where the dif difference is between the it and the group weighted average. Um, we're working on something to change the group weighted average um, for us because the LGC is going to a totally different way of calculating group weighted average. They're going to go to everybody above 100 million in uh, total general fund expenditures and everybody below. So the correlation between uh, having any real comparability is going to be lost in that. So we're going to hopefully be able to determine something on our own. If you flip over to page seven, you see the analysis of unassigned fund balance as a percentage there at 37.4. And though it looks a little bit like a W, the range there is within uh, a fairly small percentages amount. So 
all is healthy in both of those percentage, whether it's the unassigned uh, percentage or the available percentage. The available percentage is what's looked at harder when you go to debt committee at the LGC, state treasurer, et cetera. On the bottom, you see analysis of revenues over and under expenses before transfers with the general fund having a very positive number there. On page eight, you see your cash balances and fund balances and pie charts at the top with their respective totals of 59,604 and 52,603 at the bottom. And then on page nine, you see the property tax rates for the county and the group weighted average. And on the bottom, you see the collection percentage with the county exceeding the group weighted average collection percentage. And then on page 10, you see your debt analysis there with the governmental general obligations being the largest one at 49,904. And then the general fund debt service analysis on the bottom as well with that same amount being 40.26%. And you see underneath that the uh, principal and interest uh, servicing requirements for those. On pages 11 and 12, you see a pie chart with the breakdown of your general fund revenue. And you see how high the uh, ad valorem taxes are as a percentage of your overall uh, general fund revenue at 59.07. And your sales and other taxes at 21.73%. So between those two, they make up 80% you know, of the uh, county's revenue. On page 12, you see a breakdown, same, similar thing for your expenditures. You know, public safety is at 21%. Education is at 26.2% being the highest of any. And then you see human services, debt services also there. Um, for the year June 30, 21, if you've been on the board for a very long period of time, you know that the LGC used to send out what they called unit letters. LGC has stopped sending out unit letters altogether. And so they've asked the auditors any issues that they might have. They let us be the, uh, <clears throat> the person who gets to deliver the news on that with any templates they have. And so with that, um, on pages 13 and 14, this is what would be included in that. There was a deficit uh, net position that has to be uh, dealt with and response on how that's going to get fixed. There were a couple of prior period adjustments there and uh, that need to be addressed and they, they will be, I'm sure. The number two there that doesn't have to be addressed was the GASB 87 issue, which is a new standard because it's a lease standard. Uh, the LGC said you do not need to respond to that. With that said, kind of a summary, if you will, county received an unmodified report, which is a good report. The overall numbers for the county are strong and good. You do have these findings that you have to address, but other than that, things are in good shape. I'm happy to answer any questions you've got of me tonight or any time. You're welcome to call my office. I'll get you an answer to it. I happen not to be there. Tell them to give you my cell number and I'll get you an answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Management should have a system in place to verify that transactions are recorded incorrectly, thereby reducing the likelihood of errors in financial reporting. Was was that not indicative? Was, was that was that this in last year's report? Was that a finding? No, sir. So what has changed? It was for that one item, and that's the way the LGC expects us to write it up, so that's the way we did write it up. But it is so for that there just was just one, tax prior period. one item in which yes, there sir. was a miscue. Yes, sir. That's okay. correct. So nothing, nothing to be nothing any to be concern or, about. No, or reporting what we should report and so forth. That's correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you for this. Yes, sir. I Thank understand. You. Thank, thank you for allowing me to, to be Mr. included tonight. County Manager. I just wanted to note that the, the audit committee, which I'm a part of, 
talk through each of these findings at, at some length to make sure that we understood exactly where they came from and, and whether and how they were issues for us and what we would do to address them. Mr. Kozar. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for sharing the information with us tonight. And just looking at page 12, uh, where we see the education percent, the 26.20 percent of the budget. Yes, sir. Now, of course, typically, I think some of the debt service that we're paying on buildings would actually be added. So really, in a sense, we do pay more. But some of that is in facilities that we're paying debt on. Is that correct? That's correct. OK. Because generally, I think we're about 35 or 36 percent total education or something. That's correct. Yes, okay. sir. You're right. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Any other members wish to speak? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we met with the audit committee, uh, Commissioner Gooch and myself and um, the staff, and we were able to go over a lot of questions um, about a week ago, and he answered a very important couple hours. Thank you. Appreciate you all doing that. And want to, the, I know there's a name of it. Would you provide the name of the, the committee and who's on it so that the public? Uh, yes, it's Commissioner Gooch and myself, the county manager, um, the assistant county manager, Ms. Heggie, and Mr. McNally. Excellent. And Ms. Heggie um, has a, a, a pretty heavy um, accounting background as well. So yep. thank you, Ms. Heggie, for your work. County manager, any Gooch. any other comments? Yep. Thank you. Thank you uh, for bringing it, and um, I'm sure that if any other commissioners have questions, they'll, they'll actually reach out to the county manager or to Mr. McNally and uh, have further conversation. Thank you, Mr. McNally, for uh, having the audit report here tonight. And if, in the conclusion, if I understand you correctly, uh, that we were giving a State of the Union address, our budget is healthy and we're in good standing and that the county is financially healthy. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. That's always good news. Yes, sir. Uh, now to public comments. Uh, we have no one signed up for public comments. Does anyone wish to make any public comments? If not, we'll move on. Um, number six, let me stand by here. Let me find it in my um, book here. Is Ms. Hampton here by chance? County manager, would you mind taking this? Is she is? She's not. Is someone from DSS here? Um, I'm Hart. sorry, ma'am, I don't know you, but you're welcome to come forward with this, and uh, the county manager can help present this as well. And please introduce yourself. It's nice to see you. Ms. Hampton is out sick right now, so that's why um, we've got a, 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 a cuter, younger Ms. Hampton. Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Melissa Hart. I'm the administrative officer for Grandma DSS. Um, we are coming for to um, get approval for the computer hardware and software applications for the fiscal year. Um, we're up for rotation. For um, we rotate the computers every four years, so we're up to. Um, for desktops, we want to request for 13, service with license 2, laptops 4, printers and scanners 14, software license, LAN Wi-Fi 10, VPNs 20, PowerPoint um, pinpoint use that was for child support, office that's 12, and the new software for child support that is also 12. Um, the agent is requesting the purchase of these desktops and laptops for annual rotation replacement for the old desktops and laptops. Color printers are to be purchased for the accounting tech and a few supervisors. Um, and that's okay. what we have requested. Thank you. Kenny Manager, if you could just briefly state the, where IT and you are moving in regards to our overall I, uh, IT program, and then I'll 
then I'll mention the recommendation for the board. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you, Ms. Hart, for you. bringing this item to us. And um, as noted in the agenda cover sheet, um, IT has fully reviewed all of these purchases and further moving forward in the next fiscal year, we'll have a much more centralized IT purchasing and governance policy. All of the uh, computer purchases will continue to be coordinated and funded through the IT department just to make sure that we are maximizing the use of our resources and making sure that IT security is also um, handled in a, in a centralized and coordinated way. Thank you, County Manager, for that review. Board, um, what's your rec? Um, Can I ask one quick question? Yes, Mr. please. Ken? How often do we rotate the laptops? How often are they rotated out? Typically, our computers are on a four-year replacement cycle. Uh, we've we've often exceeded that by a little bit, but but that's what we attempt to stick to. Thank you, Mr. Wolfer. Uh, I just have a statement. Um, over, we had quite a few. Um, DSS department people that needed to have with us being with the COVID that needed to actually have laptops at the home at their homes to be able to work and we didn't have enough and so um, we've been trying to catch up and buy some more of those I quite frankly think you don't have enough in there to ask for so um, but that's my personal opinion knowing how many people didn't have computers that needed them the recommendation um, is to purchase 13 personal computers and four laptops in accordance to the department's 22-2023 computer rotation plan for the vendor SHI in the amount of $23,015.30. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I move that the recommendation from our DSS director be approved. And I'll second that. Any discussion? Just want to say Miss Hart is sitting beside a brainchild back there. I see Miss Patrice. We're so happy to see her. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, she is. Um, can we take a vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for coming tonight. We move now to um, some requests by Sheriff Fountain. And Sheriff, it's a pleasure to have you here tonight. And uh, the first item we'll discuss is the approval of purchase of two Sheriff Office vehicles. Okay. Good evening. So as we first give an honor to God for me being here at this time, to my team that always stands with me and behind me, I always tell them thank you and I try to get them to come out to make sure that you guys are safe doing these meetings moving forward. We are uh, asking to, as we grow, as we change and transition into this new uh, phase of law enforcement, we're aging out of our vehicles. So if you replace a laptop every four years, then probably you know the car needs to be replaced by that same time. So we're utilizing vehicles that um, are aging out and or have issues. Um, so we're requesting 22 year model vehicles at a lower cost than 23 model vehicles. We're looking for uh, approval for a Ford Expedition and I think a Ford F-150 truck, um, which will be utilized one for a K-9 and then one for patrol and uh, investigative purposes. Um, the money that we're looking at um, is probably around 70000 and we are looking to purchase those within the next uh, three to four days. We've already been identified through a regular customer that we've went through, and um, that's where we are. We're going to use capital outlay, uh, outlay funds that's already been budgeted, and uh, we're seeking your approval. And just for clarification, Sheriff, I have listed here a, a Ford um, PI a utility all-wheel drive. Yes. Uh, take it. Is that what you're calling Explore, that? Explore. Yes. Yep. A police uh, interceptor. Is that what that is? Yes, sir. All-wheel drive, and a 2022 Ford F-150 responder. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. The money is in the budget, and what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the request coming from uh, Sure. No, I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? I just um, I have a question because um, the list of vehicles I had 
um, for the sheriff's department was like 74. I know a lot of them need to be traded out, like you said. But do we know how many are getting ready to be traded out? I mean, I feel like all we did last year was say, Sheriff, you need another car. Mm -hmm. Sheriff, you need another car. And I feel like we're starting this year going, Sheriff, we need another car. And actually and what we're actually working on with the county manager is having a fixed asset list put in place so you can see the VIN numbers, asset tags, and mileage of those vehicles in your make. So when we have an issue with vehicles that may have been wrecked, um, we have a couple of motors maybe blown in them, and it's pretty much cheaper to use those for parts and keep going, especially if they came from the asset forfeiture, that we can put that money back as we can sell those or we can do anything to repatriate those uh, funds back into our fixed asset. Those ones that have already been approved budgetarily that we could purchase then we use that last. But what we've been trying to do is go through our fixed our uh, asset forfeiture money first. So it does not bear the brunt. The taxpayer don't bear, bear that burden as much. So we're going to continue to use those funds first, and then we will try to use the budgetary approved budget uh, funding for those vehicles. So Mr. Drew and I and uh, my team are working to compile a list of working lists. So every time we approach you for a vehicle, you will have a specific tag, asset number, vehicle, and the condition and purpose of why we've got to replace that vehicle. So moving forward, you will have that every time we approach you with a request. So you're, you're going to give us a title of a, 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 tr a vehicle you're going to replace with the one you're buying? Yes, ma'am. Not, okay. Yes, Because I'm, I'm, I'm really beginning to feel like, is that all we do is approve trucks uh, for the sheriff's department? Sheriff I think Fountain. on the package that you may have that identifies the vehicles that we're replacing already, yeah. And if you don't have a copy, I can provide I one for you. I do, but I just okay. didn't feel mm -hmm. like, I mean, there was... There were 74 that I counted, yes. you know, and I'm like, and I don't, that, and that was not with any of the ones that Sheriff Hardy had got approved because they haven't gotten here yet, other <laughs> than the one you're driving. Uh, <laughs> um, I didn't buy that either. <laughs> I know, I know. We approved it long before you, oh. so it has nothing to do with you. Um, but what I'm saying is, is... Um, okay. We're just not getting, you know, I just don't see the replacement value. How many people are driving vehicles that we need to get vehicles for is one of the questions I had. We have, because of the uh, aggressive recruiting that we went through, I've got five deputies that are going to need vehicles that are in uh, BLET right now. And then the ones that are aged out, total, or have maintenance problems. So we're probably looking around 10 to 12 more before the the budget is out probably 10 to 12. Is, does that include um is that in addition to your current budget no everything will be coming from with what we have now We're so not we have a combination of purchases through asset forfeiture and for our general your general fund or your sheriff's department funding yes sir um i i am glad that we're getting vehicles but i i, I think uh, i express an opinion of the board is that um, I don't think that we can continue to um, provide the funding for um, all large uh, four by four vehicles and begin to look at some Durangos and maybe some pursuit like you have the, uh, the police interceptors. Um, when you look at an overall budget process of the cost of fuel and uh, managing those larger vehicles and and to boot that um, most all standard vehicles now that lose law enforcement come in all-wheel drive. So that would be our concern that we're not buying Suburbans weekly or monthly. We're not buying Tahoes monthly. Uh, they are specific utility vehicles used for specific uh, functions within your department. Would you agree, Sheriff, that you're going to move forward in trying to ascertain the most affordable vehicles going forward? We move forward already. I have 16 identified that are already sitting and waiting. They're all Dodge Durangos. They're all ready to pursuit rated. So the dealership is holding 16 at the appropriate time. We will ask for that funding. And we've done that already. So with the next time we have this conversation, I have those vehicles sitting right now, Mark. Those Durangos? Yes. So how yeah. quickly do we get rid of the surplus vehicles? Uh, we're working with the county manager to get those done. And some of those vehicles that other departments, and I've talked to Drew about, 
other agencies are asking for vehicles that are not way out of line, and we're working with the Animal Control Center to get, donate a vehicle to them. We're also going to donate two of our vehicles that are being surplus to Vance Granville Community College in the relationship building process. They have no vehicles for BLET, so two of our surplus vehicles will be donated to them after the approval from the board. Um, the county manager just saw the request from Grant, Vance Granville. So we're using our vehicle assets to, one, help other agencies within our, our uh, local government, but as well as build bridges with Cavanch Crown Community College and other agencies that may need us down the road or we may need them. Thank you for answering that. Yes, sir. Any other questions from any board members? I just, I just have another statement. I'm sorry. Not to pick on you, but I know DSS, it's, you know, the, your, your guys are important. Every single one of them, and they need a newer vehicle. But so are my babies that are being transported at DSS. And their vehicles are as old or if not older than yours. Tell them come see me. Do what? They can come see me. They can come see you. Okay. <laughs> I'll work on that. Remind Miss Hampton that, okay? <laughs> come see me. Share the love. Yeah. Hey, well, if the board approves it, I'm willing to help. I'm just concerned about our babies being in old vehicles. Yes, ma'am. Yes, county manager. It's perhaps an opportune moment to mention that we're also working towards centralized vehicle purchasing and surplusing. Um, at the moment, each department each year has a, a capital outlay for cars, which might be zero or might contain some amount of money that, it, that represents the, the purchase of a certain number of cars for that fiscal year. Um, I don't happen to know off the top of my head what DSS's budget in that regard was this year, but again, I hope that in the future we'll really be doing a, 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 a more centralized evaluation of our entire fleet and, and purchasing based on that overall assessment of the age and condition of the fleet. And just, uh, just for the board, thank you, County Manager. Just the board, page 47 of your agenda does cover um, his vehicle replacement tracker that he did provide us um, as part of the agenda. So, um, based upon that, board, is there any more questions? What's the pleasure of the board? Can I have a motion? I think we've already had a motion. Oh, we already have. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Sheriff. Yes, um, next topic, uh, bear with me, Sheriff. Okay, we'll discuss the uh, consulting. Uh, and so, um, based on conversation with the Sheriff and the, uh, of the approval of the next agenda, I have approval of consulting contract board. Um, this has been discussed uh, with the county manager, the Sheriff, and um, and the council, uh, we're going to revert back to the previous uh, contract that was. Uh, Mr. Ram, would you like to talk about that? Sure. Uh, we have a contract currently in place, and after looking at the request, we just thought it would be the simplest thing to extend that contract through the end of this fiscal year. Um, and there would be a, a $1 an hour. Uh, fee adjustment uh, related to that as well. So it would basically extend it through June 30th, and the hourly rate would go up from $73 an hour to $74 an hour. Thank you. And county manager, just correct me if I'm wrong, uh, board will be asking you to vote on that uh, approval based upon the attorney's review of the final contract that was previously in place but will be uh, administered by the county manager and attorney, correct? That's correct. We'll just do a simple amendment that just extends a term and raises the fee per hour by one dollar. That'll be the only change from the existing contract that was previously approved. So the purpose of this item is to seek approval of a six-month consulting contract that will end uh, after six months. Um, and so uh, this board, the new elected sheriff, Mr. Fountain, wishes to continue uh, the agreement uh, until June 30, 2023. Um, and then the board will take up but again should it come up again and at that point uh, we call out further discussion if necessary So that's where at board the county manager and the sheriff uh, the, excuse me the county manager and sheriff uh, both uh, recommend the approval of this contract Have a motion Mr. Chairman, I'm so happy uh, Sheriff Fountain that you're finding this to be a good service and with that in mind I'll, I'll move that we approve the recommended contract 
Saga. Any, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Finally, uh, share something that was not in the agenda originally has been placed into the agenda is the purchase and all members of the board should have a copy of it now and the sheriff is prepared to brief us I'm sure and the purchase of a request for a gray key mobile forensic license and sheriff um, and the purpose of that is to uh, the purpose of this is to prove that uh, and sheriff I'll let you take it from there so with the technology and with the growing capacity of the sheriff's office we've developed a special operations and intelligence unit the Special Operations Intelligence Unit will target and go after high trafficking drug uh, arrests, which we've uh, done a lot in the past 60 days. Today makes day 60. So we've done those based on technology. And as technology grows and uh, cyber crimes increase, we need to start looking forward to what uh, equipment we could utilize to best serve our agency and this community. So Great Key is a system in which we can do cell phone extractions off of telephones, particularly the iPhones that are locked. Those phones that will be seized by search warrant and other assets we will seize, we will use Great Key to go in them. The only agency within this area that has this technology is in Cary. So anytime we have to get a cell phone extraction done utilizing Great Key, we have to get a search warrant, take that search warrant to Cary, North Carolina, and have them do a cell phone extraction and then we have to get the evidence back in the chain of custody done. So we're trying to cut that out and we're trying to make sure we're self-contained as a unit. Then we will then look at a process of bringing a poll or bringing a, a uh, intelligence analyst on board full time. Um, so we do have an an we do, you do have a forensic person at, the, at present, correct? Yes, that's okay. just one position. Um, okay. We're looking at a civilian position. However, Great Key will then let us uh, service other agencies within this community. So what we're trying to do with the operations we're conducting now with ALE, FBI, DEA, um, if we seize phones, we want to make sure we can do all our investigations in-house and not go outside of the house to get things done. But as a justice center, we will then offer the same service to our local uh, agencies at a small fee uh, for an investigative process. But until those policies are in place, we want to go ahead and start the purchasing process, cover the policies and uh, the way we're going to do funding, uh, we're not funding the policies with the county attorney and with the county manager to get those things in place before we're fully operational. So we just want to get ahead of the game to make sure we're ready to go once everything is in place. So we've got a uh, policy amendment or policy study going on now to upgrade all of our policies to include electronic, electronic devices and equipment. So we're going to be ahead of the game. Once we get the equipment, we'll be ready to go. Sheriff, yes, sir. how often do you, how many of these phones do you actually compensate over a period of time? I think of last year it may have been 30, 35, but again, once we get them, we got to go somewhere else. Um, the night that we uh, worked with the Highway Patrol and got those 10 kilos of cocaine off the streets, then we have to go to Cary to get those cell phones extracted. So we're trying to cut that process out to keep everything in house. And we will charge other counties or enforcement, law enforcement agencies similar to what Kerry was charging us, correct? Correct. correct. So and we, this money is coming out of our asset forfeiture funds, so it's again no burden on the taxpayers, and we're not going outside of our budget confines to get it done. Um, but again, it has to be approved to you gentlemen and ma'am, and uh, the county manager and the county attorney are going to work with us to make sure the policy is straight and ready to go. And we discussed that the license fee would be appropriately looked at and charged to the others who were using it so it wouldn't be a money-making operation it would just basically be charging a, a reasonable cost based on the per use license fee yeah. policy would be in line with the protection of privacy the retention of data yes, the um, continuation of, um, of making sure that it falls within the guidelines of the district attorney um, and so 
uh, if you look at page, your last page here, the sheriff provides a list of his current balance as an asset forfeiture. That's a new process that the county manager and him has put in place, which is very helpful. Uh, I will note that you mentioned that you needed a, a forensic uh, analyst. Um, if you don't, if 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 the funding does not allow that, uh, do you need this tool? Yes, sir. We still going to utilize it. Um, but again, we don't want to just burden somebody down to have them on call, you know, the whole time either. But we're just always growing. We're trying to be meet the needs. We so got to look. I at just it. don't want to build any expectations that that if you obtain this, that that would in tune bring in an analyst. Uh, but understanding that, uh, do we have someone presently that is trained to use forensic computer? Yes, sir. And do the appropriate downloads within the agency? Yes, sir, Mr. Chad. I'm Higgs, sorry, the sir. office. Yes, My sir. Fault. Mr. Chad Higgs does that already with one type of device that we will continue to utilize. And he's also our evidence tech, and he also just went through a, a uh, auditing process through our evidence through Forsyth County Sheriff's Office, which we had a good review on that as well. So he will be doing that um, as we will train others under that license to get it done. The gray key will not leave the sheriff's office for any reason. It will be an internal control device that stays at the sheriff's office. So it won't be put in somebody's car to go somewhere. Um, it will stay fixed in our evidence room. Is that also include iPads, computers, or yes. just cell phones? They can get iPads too. Uh, Sheriff, does Wake County, Durham County have this? No. Um, I just have to wonder at this price point, $11,620, why they don't. Because everybody will say, well, let's just go to Cary. They don't take the due diligence to get the things done. And our thing is making sure, if, say if we have a child that's been abducted or some high-profile case, we don't need to go to carry and wait for a search warrant. We need to do things at home to make sure we are properly addressing the safety of our community. So it was just a study that myself, my uh, chief of special operations and Mr. Bayless and I sat down and had this conversation and thought that this was one of the avenues we need to go now. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you for staying at the forefront of this. Yes, sir. Sheriff, will your asset forfeiture funds be able to pay for the yearly subscription? Yes, sir. We're um, getting back on the ball, and we're going to get away from the federal asset forfeitures somewhat. We're going to use the North Carolina Department of Revenue to generate uh, things when we uh, go after seizures, such we did last week when we had the 222 pounds of marijuana that we confiscated. Um, there was a tax bill of over $400,000 that we will be sharing with ALE that will be coming back to the county. Um, so those funds that we continue to operate and get these drugs off the street to make our communities safer are going to be able to utilize technology and fund balances that we're trying to continue, not as a money-making thing, but if we do result in getting these assets, then we're going to utilize those for the better for betterment of our agency in this community. Independent of asset forfeiture funds, how much was to be yearly? Right around 11000 for the initial licensing, and then I think it's per 30 um, 30 hits that we utilize. So if we did 35 last year, then anything above that, we would use other funds to bring that in. But everything that we've looked at so far, we should be able to main those through licenses and fees within the budget that we already looked at now. And Mr. Bayless is an asset, and that's why I want to keep him. He keeps us pretty much in line with everything we need to, so it's not a burden to the taxpayers. Okay, this is totally discussed board with the uh, county attorney and county manager. Um, what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, uh, I move that we approve the recommendation of the purchase of Gray Key Mobile Extraction as recommended by uh, Sheriff Fountain. All in favor? Or is there no, any discussion? Any more discussion? All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. I just want to say we, um, our vehicles are being outfitted. Um, we've changed our uniforms. We're changing those, and you will be seeing this this new change coming. 
And again, those things are not outside of the budget that we already currently have. So uh, if we're truly going to be a part of the thin blue line, there's no blue and brown. So we're going to change the concept, change the culture with a new vision and a new direction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff Fallon. Okay. The next item is uh, toilet partition replacement, Grandma County Athletic Park, uh, Sports Pavilion, restrooms. Um, Mr. Phillips. Good evening, uh, Chairman May, Granville County Commissioners. Uh, I appreciate you letting me have the time tonight. This is the first of three agenda items I have for you tonight. Um, this is a request to award a fixed price service contract to replace um, some toilet partitions over at the sports pavilion at the restrooms at the athletic park. For those who don't know, the sports pavilions is the open-sided structure that holds the basketball courts. Built back in 2007, the existing partitions have gotten, have become rusted and damaged over the past 16 years. Um, to replace them, we have selected a solid polymer HDPE partition that will resist corrosion and lengthen the time for an extra replacement with proper care. Uh, the product comes with a 25-year warranty against breakage, corrosion, or de uh, delamination. Uh, we were able to obtain two prices uh, for the supply and install of these uh, partitions. So um, you've got the pricing before you, and you see my recommendation. I'll ask for any questions that you may have. Any comments from the board before we assess a motion? What's the pleasure of the board? A motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Appreciate all your hard work. Uh, my second item is uh, surveying services for Northern Granville Senior Center in Stowall. Um, this request is award a, a fixed price service contract for surveying services needed for the planned Northern Granville Senior Center. Um, the land survey is needed to recombine the seven uh, various land parcels obtained by the county and to prepare location and topographic surveys needed for the design development process. Um, we've determined that Barry Oak surveying was best suited for this service since his, his firm provided the surveying needs for the initial for the individual lot purchases and has existing survey control that will not be need to be recreated by another firm. Um, Barry Oak Surveying has provided a fixed price proposal of $9,750 for the service. Um, my recommendation basically says, indicates that um, we would like to exempt ourselves from the Mini Brooks Act, which is North Carolina General Statute 143-64-31. Uh, because the estimated professional fees are less than thirty, less than fifty thousand dollars, and to award a service contract to Barry Oak Surveying for fixed price not to exceed nine thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Okay. The recommendation uh, is that the development services director recommends that the county uh, exempts itself from North Carolina General Statutes one forty three. 6431 by utilizing the exemption indicated, the estimated professional fees, and the amount less than $50,000. Uh, do we have any um, discussions on this or anything before we have a motion? What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the contract with Perry Oates. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 
Thank you. Thank How you. How soon can we start? <laughs> You're on a roll. <laughs> the next Keep it. is design services contract for Northern Granville Senior Center. Uh, this request to consider a water and a fixed price service contract for architectural engineering services uh, for the future Northern Granville Senior Center. Uh, through our request for qualification process, Oakley Collier Architects was selected and approved uh, for providing architecture engineering services for the Senior Center located in Stovall. Uh, the scope of the services includes schematic design, uh, construction documents, bidding and contracting assistance, and construction administration. Uh, the fee rate, which was negotiated from 245000 to 230000 with no reduction with no reduction in level of services, is within the current industry standards. Uh, attached is a copy of Oakley Collier's proposal, um, indicating the, uh, the service uh, and the project approximate size and cost. Um, it's my recommendation to award the uh, design services contract to Oakley Collier Architects for amount not to exceed $230,000. What's the pleasure of the board? Move to accept the architect uh, and the recommendation come from our uh, second. Second motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Scott, if you would. In three minutes, describe for us, the board, the value of the Vision Walk-In Clinic at Hilltop. Um, welcoming. Um, probably the best word, you know, it's... it's an outstanding facility. I know most of y'all were there um, when you had the opportunity to view it. Um, it's just a, um, a very much needed service for, for Oxford, for Granville County. I think it, hopefully it'll, I, I feel confident that it's, it's going to provide the service that's needed for our struggling citizens. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. And um, Mr. Phillips has a question. I have, have, I'm coming along with you. Types of things if it, if it, if it oh. It's coming. I think we've got, uh, yeah, uh, Lord, uh, Ms. Lisa's is there. Yeah, it's been it's unfortunate situation, really was. Um, it was most unfortunate that we didn't recognize the problem of the unescalated piping in the attic areas during our recent renovation. Um, there was very limited work done up there. Um, what's even more unfortunate that this is not the first time those buildings have had a have had a water break um, during operation of other tenants within the building, uh, and and it was never corrected. Um, so um, we're working now with trying to get that problem resolved. Um, I've gone out and submitted pricing for the rebuild back to our, our uh, insurance adjuster, um, which is reviewing that cost right now. We hope to get the work started within the next 30 days. So we've got three primary contracts. We've got to repair the walls and the ceilings that were damaged by the, by the water. Um, we've got to replace the flooring. Um, we've got to replace uh, about 20 pieces of base cabinet. And um, we've got to repair and, or remediate the problem that's up in the attic, which is the uninsulated piping that's up there. So, um, you know, majority of the work will be covered under our insurance plan. Um, so it's just going to take some time. It's very unfortunate, but we're working on it. It's been it's been a focus of my attention for the last. Two weeks, three weeks. So, thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. thanks, Scott. Moving on to proclamation resolutions of legislative matters. Does anyone on the board uh, have any specific thing they'd like to discuss regarding that? I would just like to say to uh, at our district meeting last last weekend, there's. Uh, settlement 
from CVS, Walgreens, and Walk and Walmart on the opiate, and North Carolina is getting six hundred million dollars coming to them. Right. And they're to ask North Canada just hold on. What you got? Um, I'd like to, uh, County Manager, if I could direct your question and something I saw an exigen, but it, it's along the lines in which we're talking about. I just wanted to verify through Mr. McNally, and it's just not a pop quiz, Mr. McNally, but um, I, I saw somewhere around five hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars was for lottery. Uh, it, so, could you um, confirm uh, for me that that would be our yearly? Contribution from the state for for the education lottery. It from okay, but five hundred sixty-seven thousand was for the last for this year. Uh, Somewhere around that. Or the one I saw in the consent. This I think is twenty-three. The one that would be, uh, yeah. Okay. The, the point I'm making for the board is that we, every opportunity we get to talk to our legislatures, we need to remind them that that is not, um, Mr. Sossman, I'm glad you're here. Um, that is not uh, um, what um, what I thought the intention of the uh, the lottery was. I, I would like to like I, I love you, my friend, and uh, but. Uh, Tier two counties, counties such as Granville County, um, uh, gaining a capital funding of the amount to to get to that level and and to receive five hundred sixty seven thousand in that total in, in total for an education lottery um, um, leaves us um, not with a smile on our face. So just go up there and fight for us. Put your gloves on and get it up. All right. Thank you, sir. Next item. Uh, thank you, board. Any other questions regarding that? Thank you. Um, Agriculture Advisory uh, Board uh, to make appointments. Um, let me just read through this real quickly. And Commissioner Karen, I may ask you yep. to take over at this point. I don't. Um, I think you have you don't do you have one to fill this time? That's fine. Okay, go if you would take this. Now I have a, a I do have a motion for this. So the agricultural advisory board, the function of the agricultural advisory board shall be to promote agricultural value and the general welfare of the county, and more specifically increase identify uh, and, and pride in the agriculture community and the way of life to encourage economic financial health of agriculture, horticulture, and forestry. Uh, the term of Robert Lawrence, District 5, is expiring. District 5, do you have an appointment? I do. A Jeff Preddy of Wilton. Been a motion? Yes, it is. Second. Been motion and a second that Jeff Preddy uh, fill the term of District 5 on the Agricultural Advisory Board. Pleasure of the board. Uh, Aye. 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 Right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Sorry. That's okay. Coming on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll take it from here. And, uh, Mr. Karen, it's a Sh uh, Shelby McStutes and William Lyons expiring in February. Um, Mr. Karen, would you like to extend Mr. McStute's? Uh, yes, we reappoint Ms. Shelby McStute. And uh, District 7, um, Commissioner Gooch. Uh, yes, Mr. I'd like to reappoint William Lyons. So both are for, up for reappointment, and is there a motion that we move that forward? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Moving on to Animal Control Advisory Committee. Again, Mr. Kieran, I'll ask you to step in briefly for me. Uh, we get down to where we're District 5. Um, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. So the term of Dean Richards, District 5, exp 
Excuse me. The term of Dean Richards, uh, District 5, expires in February, District 5. I'll be Mr. Dean's. We appreciate his service. He'll I'll be stepping down from the board, and I'll be appointing a Lori Scapino of Creedmoor. It's been a motion for Lori Scapino. Is there a second? Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Like sign. Motion approved. Thank you. The terms of uh, Dr. Trudy Bowden, District One, Michael Covert of District Three. Um, they're eligible for reappointment, and Dr. Abigail Crownshaw, uh, District 3, appointed by District 4, has, she's resigned. So do I have a motion on, on Trudy Bowden and Michael Covart, one and, one and three, to continue? Move to reappoint. Move to reappoint Michael uh, Covart. So when it comes to Mr. Covart and, and Ms. Bowden, we have motions. Um, um, do I have, a, I have a motion? Do I have a second for those two? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And now for Dr. Um, Abigail Crownshaw, District 3, appointed by District 4, has resigned. Is, does District 3 wish to appoint? Or I District 4, Dr. Cozart, do you have any appointment this time? I didn't come prepared. I didn't come prepared. I didn't know I would, would but uh, okay. if Commissioner Between Hinman, the two of us, we'll find someone. That's fine. Thank okay. You. So we'll right. carry that on to the next meeting, and, and you'll let Ms. Weary know. So thank you. Thank you. Um, just know that there is an application from Andrea Westcott from District 4 that has been con received consideration. Uh, does that take care of that? Well, that if, if, if she's a apply. Then I would like to um, uh, uh, appoint Andrea, whatever. Andrea Westcott. Westcott to that position. I second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Andrea Westcott is appointed. Thank you. The Garamba County uh, Library uh, System Board of Trustees. Um, Bear with me as we uh, get through this. Uh, we have uh, Athy Robinson, District 6, has resigned and needs to be replaced. Commissioner Karen, do you have any one to appoint? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I uh, recommend that we appoint uh, Amy Wester. Okay. Do I have a motion? That is a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ms. Webster is, Ms. Webs Wester is appointed. I apologize for mispronouncing the game. The next one is a slate uh, item for the Human, um, the Granville County uh, Human Re uh, Relations Commission. Uh, if you would put, turn to page 87, uh, these are is the proposed roster uh, for the Human Relations Commission. I'll give you a second to look at it, uh, just a moment to look at it to make sure that you're in line. There are some new appointees and there are some vacancies which will be filled. But this will be the slate in which we are voting on tonight collectively. And if there's any objections to any on that, please advise. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I request that we remove uh, Reverend Dennis Daniels and Tito Montoyo from the District 6 appointments. Okay. Not on this, this is vacant. Yeah. So yours will remain vacant for the, at, at, at this time. Commissioner Karens uh, will have a vacancy at this time and to be announced at a later date. If, you, if, if your district has a vacancy, I think that does cover all the vacancies. I think all the other commissioners um, have, have, um, and have their appointments in place. Based upon your review of the uh, slate, slate of representatives for the Human Relations Commission proposed roster. Do I have a motion? It's approved. So moved. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now the, the vacancies will need to come back with that. Yes. Hopefully next meeting. And yes, ma'am. And I will tell you that the county manager has been gracious enough to talk uh, talk, and he is going to be reviewing all of our 
he's going to work out a process in which all our boards and appointments um, and um, scheduled length of time of service are appropriately reviewed so that uh, we want to make sure that we provide an opportunity for all citizens that want to serve to serve on these committees. And thank you, County Manager. I know it's one of many. <laughs> Just another project, so thank you. Um, so now at, at large positions, uh, this is a new item. Um, Mr. Charles Miller of the uh, Granville County um, Veterans Committee is here, uh, and I will, if it's okay with you, Mr. Miller, I'll speak to that. Um, the considered addition of an at-large position on the Veterans Affairs Committee, um, and the Veterans Committee, uh, Affairs Committee was created by the adoption of resolution on January 22nd, 2013. Uh, the committee shall consist of, and it provides representation, and what they're asking for is uh, an addition of an at-large member, uh, one at-large, additional one at-large member. I think it gives us a total of two, if I'm correct. Um, and so, uh, is this the board's, uh, the board chair serves on that committee, and I make a motion that we adopt that. I'll second that. All of uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And so, if we could turn to the next page of the Veterans Affairs Committee, we actually have an, um, an at-large um, nomination. Uh, the name is David Sella. I submitted a resume for consideration. I think Mr. Miller is very familiar with him. Um, and the board is very familiar with him. Uh, he's been attending the meetings at, at, for some time now. Uh, I'll get back to the other positions. I just want to get this at large position taken care of at this point. So is, is it the pleasure of the board? Uh, what's your pleasure in um, accepting um, Mr. appointing Mr. Sella as a at-large member? Mr. Chairman, I move for approval. Can I have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Back to the top, the, the terms of Larry Hester, District 1, Michael O'Brien, um, District 6, appointed by District 3, um, Mr. Scott, District 5, my district, Mr. Siebert, District 7, Lynn Bexar, um, Judy, Judy Smith, and Ann Williams, uh, end of February. Um, Mr. Scott has resigned, so uh, I'm asking that uh, Mr. Scott be replaced um, with a Jim Albright, and the others continue to serve. Is there any objection? We have a motion. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, Mr. Albright will now serve for District 5, and the other members will continue. County Manager, if you could cover with us the amendment and extension of sign replacement contract. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this probably could have been on consent as well. Uh, this is a uh, a small dollar but important contract whereby we make sure that that all of the needed street signs around the county are are there <laughs> occasionally they disappear or are knocked over and we have to have a, a function to get them back up so that people know where they're going uh, this item is for the approval of a, a one-year extension of the current contract to give staff time to to put it back out for bid which we intend to do this spring I'll move it you make the motion. Yes. <laughs> I have a second. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. County Manager, do you have any report for us tonight, sir? Just to briefly mention. Um, related to an item on our last agenda, which was the grant-funded installation of, of drums uh, in front of Thornton Library. I wanted to report back and mention that this morning, uh, Library Director Will Robinson, uh, Mr. Gary Bowen, Scott Phillips, and I met, uh, and they'd already done the, uh, 
location of the utilities. We looked over the, the sort of location of, of the installation and um, Mr. Robinson will be checking in with the city to make sure no additional permits would be required for that, but we'll be moving forward with installation of those sort of following that review that we did today. Thank you, County Manager. Any question from the board regarding that? Mr. Wren, you've had a busy week. Anything for us? I don't have anything uh, at this point. I do have a couple of minors for economic development and property acquisition. Close, uh, close now session. or closed session? Closed session. Closed session. Okay. Um, at the appropriate time, we're going to close session to, to discuss those matters. Um, start with our, our board here. I'll start with Commissioner Hemman on her our county report. Um, it was a very, very interesting um, day on last Thursday to get to go to two different openings um, within seconds of each other, it seemed like. But it was nice to, to know that we have visions now. It's, it, it is vision, right? Vision now where we can send people that, that do have drug-related problems or mental problems or whatever problems. There's something in the county now that we can send people to to get help right away instead of having to try to find some place to send them to. So that was wonderful. And then, of course, D'Artani, and I can't even say the name of it. I, I, Jackie does a much better job of that. But anyway, it was wonderful getting that, that um, building opened and have that, that resource here in town. So thank you very much. Commissioner Kozor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I surely share Commissioner Hinman's feel for just being at those events. It was very gratifying just to be there. I just wanted to uh, acknowledge the presence of uh, Mr. Adam McConnell, the interim CEO at Groundway Health System. We're so happy to see you tonight, and thank you for all you've done for our hospital and what we know you'll continue to do, and we appreciate you uh, assuming that role during this time. Thank you so much. And also, I just want to uh, just say how much I uh, appreciate Chairman May and I having the opportunity to meet with our school board, and I really believe that we're on a good path, and just appreciate the spirit everyone brought to the meeting, and I think we're off in a, in a good place. And just want to say, I uh, thank Ms. Deborah. She sent out a number of steering committee invitations uh, for the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Just want to invite you to be a part. Uh, I do look forward and I'm very thankful to be a part of the Public Education Steering Committee, but you saw all of those and they are open to all commissioners to participate. So look forward to seeing you there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Kozar. Commissioner Karen, District 6. It was, uh, again, a busy week last uh, last week, as uh, Commissioner Cozart and Commissioner May stated, with uh, the opening of our Hilltop uh, Center there. Uh, not to take any, anything away from our um, health department here, but another avenue for folks to receive um, one-stop shopping for um, their needs in our community, uh, especially in regards to um, folks when they're in crises. Um, an additional re resource for our people not having to go to Vance or Durham County is outstanding. And uh, I think uh, Commissioner Hinman referenced uh, Mayor Sargent's uh, outstanding way to say D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan, the most d <laughs> delicious deliverer of meat and uh, of uh, high quality um, uh, sundries uh, here locally. Uh, fantastic movie night, uh, the, the Hog Farmer Trials of Joey Carter from our um, Crawford Extension of viewing there um, hits home here in North Carolina with the uh, nuisance lawsuits um, that you'll face. I know that um, they vilified pork farmers and uh, tried to say that they were this awful, evil uh, folks and then you realize that it's basically our neighbors that are farming. and. Uh, you understand that uh, farm production takes a little bit of um, a little bit of dirty, a little bit of stinky, a little bit of loud, um, but we all sure do like to eat. Um, but uh, again, uh, Commissioner uh, Kozar pointed out that uh, we've had a resignation of our executive director at the Granville Health Systems and our 
our new capable interim leader here, Adam uh, McConnell, our finance director here uh, tonight. Appreciate you coming out. I hope it wasn't uh, too awful exciting for you. You'll be able to sleep tonight when you go home. <laughs> so, um, Sigwasa, uh, we uh, attended the um, retreat for the city of Creedmoor. I think at least three of us or four of us were at that uh, that event down in the southern end there and uh, did a real good presentation of a I-85 interceptor uh, program. Unfortunately, uh, here in the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, Sigwasa, um, as anything else is man-made, suffered a, a little setback. Uh, we had a small 36-inch uh, diameter uh, halfway sewer um, pipe break, and uh, we're, we're working on getting that fixed, but uh, have not had a report too many violations to the state for that because, again, it was a, wasn't a raw sewage uh, spill, but uh, we're still making sure we get that done $140,000 later on the backs of those uh, the folks down on the southern end. But all is good in District 6. Commissioner Gooch, um, by the way, uh, for the pleasure for the audience of so those attending, uh, Commissioner Gooch is the, actually the chairman of Savasa's uh, board, and Commissioner Karen is a representative on that board as well. Uh, and so, um, Commissioner Gooch, uh, I'll just keep my remarks brief. We, uh, like you said, we had a busy week last week, and it was especially busy being part of the Sequoia board, as as Commissioner Karen's already spoke about. And uh, our week didn't end until Saturday afternoon, so we we. Uh, Covered a lot of ground last week, and uh, looking forward to a day or two of break this week, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Gooch. Uh, Commissioner Jay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to uh, reiterate all of what it was said when we opened the uh, dump. First time I ever took ate goat meat and didn't know I was eating goat meat. For, for Athor, <laughs> someone told me that, that was goat meat. But anyway, it tasted good. So we can give you a try. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, last Friday, Friday night of movie night, there was a good movie uh, talking about Joy. But Joy, was, uh, he would be at uh, Roxboro, I think it's the 13th. Is this Friday? This Friday night, he would be at the Roxboro, at the uh, middle spray, uh, station at, in Roxboro, but uh, it's showing the same movie. And it was a great movie. And uh, thanks for the invitation. I appreciate it. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Jay. Commissioner Williford. I'm learning. I'm coming along. Last couple of weeks have been busy. I don't have anything. Um, I'd like to point out back in the back, Gary Bowen. A lot of people don't know this, but Gary's been with the county for a long time. And uh, I've seen what, in the hardware business, Gary worked a lot of hours fixing pipe, broken pipes at all times of night and day and weekend. So I know what he, what he does. So i just like to thank him for what he does for the county. Thank you. Uh, mine will be brief. Uh, it has been busy, but uh, I believe we're accomplishing a lot as we move along. Uh, it was a good meeting in Creedmoor, um, listening to all the various um, components of their of their government and who they're working with. Um, the county manager uh, actually provided a um, a brief description of himself and his um, his vision, and uh, it was very uh, good to hear. He accounted for himself well. Um, for us, um, I just want everyone to to know that the Granville County Board of Commissioners will meet at the Expo Center, the Convention Center at, at here on Monday, February 20th at 2 p.m. and at the Creedmoor Community Center in the Willow Room um, on the 24th at 9 a.m. for our annual retreat. I, uh, you'll learn a lot more by coming. Uh, we have a robust schedule. 
will cover uh, a lot of uh, different topics um, and have some lot of, uh, uh, I hope, a robust, open discussion about different challenges that we're facing as the county and, and ways that we can overcome those challenges and in ways in which we can um, better uh, serve the citizens of Granville County. Um, and one of the issues that came up in the uh, Creedmore meeting was our fire commission and the work that they need to do. Mr. Anderson in the audience, he's on the commission as one of our civilians or uh, citizens, if you will. We have the commissions made up of three citizens, three SMEs, and uh, one um, person representing the fire association, which is the chiefs. So as, as I told um, the, the group in, um, in Creedmoor, um, we're next to the last county in North Carolina to actually pull together a unified fire district. Uh, Rome's not built in a day. And there's a lot of stake and interest in each by each fire department. And so we'll continue to work until we can um, find solutions that will better best utilize the uh, county's resources that was set aside in a separate fire tax. And, and so, and again, the whole purpose of that fire tax was to provide a conduit of revenue specifically for our fire departments that would uh, no longer uh, impact our uh, fund balance um, because the fund balance could no longer sustain that type of funding and the funding that's going to be required in the distant future. So uh, before I end tonight, I'd like to uh, do something a little awkward. It's okay with you, county manager. I'm not going to dance or sing. Uh, but uh, Mr. Saucerman, uh, I'd like to invite you to the podium as a, a guest representative of Granville County. It's a pleasure to have you here tonight, just to see if you'd like to uh, address our board with anything. Uh, I, I know I'm catching off guard, it's, uh, but uh, you showed up. That's right. You, well, you don't get, get preachers get. off guard. We're like cats. You throw us up, we land on our feet, or we try to. Um, well, I've enjoyed being here. You've had a very, very busy meeting, and you've carried it out very efficiently. Uh, I was glad to see you were making these approvals of necessary items that are needed. I am uh, willing to accept any requests. I'm getting requests. Appropriations, I'm on the Appropriations Committee. So that's uh, critical that I get the information so we can prepare it and present it, whatever the requests are. I mean, if you ask for $200 million, that's fine. Uh, all they can do is say, no, we won't give you $200 million. We'll give you $2 million. And really all you wanted was a million. So. <laughs> But uh, my point is, I'm willing to ask for anything and represent Granville County and the District 32. Um, I'm, I'm excited about where we're headed. I just think things are moving in the right direction and we're off to a good start and a great start uh, here in Granville County. So, so Mr. Sosman, just to, to help us, we've got requests from other representatives as well, which is a good thing. Uh, the entire board and uh, county manager are engaged with our legislators, which is something that uh, is not always occurred, and we're excited about it. Uh, we're excited about our representation that we have in Raleigh. Uh, I would ask you to get with the county manager. He has sp some specific things that he can identify for you okay. that this board is aware of, ranging from uh, uh, any need that we have in the county across the board, of course, as, as I said before, one of the biggest um, challenges this board has is um, ensuring that we are providing the sufficient funding and, and efficient funding uh, for our schools. And yeah, so uh, it's that a that challenge, and in, in particularly capital. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and there are other needs, uh, transportation needs, things of that nature that, that, that we often are not um, a member of CAMPO. Um, and that's the uh, Raleigh Metropolitan Area uh, uh, Transportation uh, Committee. Often Granville County is a, uh, a blip on the radar and we're dealing with all the other major municipalities, uh, Wake County particularly. And so um, we, I know you're on, I believe you're on that committee. 
Yes, so uh, I know that I'll be working with Mr. Baker, the county manager, and, and Justin Jurgerson here shortly on a request regarding Highway 56. And so I don't know how far that can go, but again, that is something I know our board is always looking after things that, in regards to how we can receive uh, better transportation uh, coverage. Well, there's constituents is concerned about roads too, because I'm getting requests from them, and I'm forwarding them to uh, DOT, and we're following it up on on those requests to make sure those uh, needs are met too. So uh, we're staying extremely busy <laughs> uh, in my office, but I'll be glad to get with you and you just uh, let me know, we'll work out a time. Do any board members have anything specific they'd like to ask? I would just like to ask, ask uh, at the old saying said, if it's not, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Tell them to leave 96 alone because they'd have made it worse than what it was. <laughs> okay. Some places on 96, a dirt road is better. <laughs> they've, been, they've been patching, and they're patching where they patch it on in spots of it. it it's, it's in terrible shape, I'm telling you. The patch, where they patch, it's in worse shape. Well, I'm, I'm sure... Send that message on. Get your hands off of Highway 96. Unless they're going to tape it all the way. Huh? 96 North. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. 96 North. Okay. Toward the Virginia line. <laughs> <laughs> the other 96 sucks too. Okay. God bless all of you. Thank you thank for what you, you th th And thank you for coming to our meetings because we, we know you care because you're here. So thank well, you. Well, I do care. I do care. And I'll be at some of your other retreats uh, and other events too and the board um, thank you mr sossman uh, i would like to know that that mr cummings has a robust list of projects that he's working on all of which we don't mention every every time we get together but uh, he's working on a range of things i just got an email recently on a project that he's still working on and continue to work on and so uh, we know that he's uh getting things done so appreciate it with that being said is uh, can i have a motion to, to take us to closed session i'll make that motion we go into closed session can i have a second second, second. all in favor all right uh, thank you thank you for coming tonight